blueprint and trying to remember that without the distractions of the mind, the distractions of the world is going to take more than just talking about. So the purpose of life is to live, not mechanically, not like a robot going through our days, but organically with the natural flow of all of the elements of nature around us. And the Lemurians today are going to be talking about what that looks like. Connecting to elements doesn't need to be a mind process, but the mind does have a process for invoking grace. This is a class about grace. So many of you are asking where I get some of these teachings from. And it's been a lifelong journey. Um, and I noticed throughout a lot of my teachings as well and learnings um, in both Hinduism and Buddhism and New Age technologies that the Lemurians were the closest to help us remember the soul. Um, and, and I noticed similarities in Buddhist teachings in um, yoga teachings, Eastern yoga teachings, in Western yoga teachings, in um, spiritual New Age teachings, everywhere. And I began to see that the commonality is grace. The commonality is um, opening the soul and co sort of corralling the mind um, in, a, in a unique way. So some of you will notice that this teaching has some ancient New Age technology, alchemy technology with elements. Buddhists will notice that it has some Buddhism tenets. Um, Indians will notice that it has some subculture in that as well. And I believe that we all derived um, our belief systems in our religions and spiritual backgrounds from our ancient memories of Lemuria. So I hope that answers the question about where a lot of this comes from. Um, to live longing for purpose is what I've noticed about why most people don't have a general memory of the soul's gifts and technologies is because you're striving for purpose, longing for it. And the world has taught you that you have to think about it and that you have to get it from career, status, uh, power, control, um, so many other mechanisms that fall into more of a robotic lifestyle. But again, according to the Lemurians, we're not here to live mechanically, but rather organically. And to live longing for life purpose is the beginning of what we call our soul's offerings. We begin to crave for our offerings that the soul has it's trying to direct us, but we are craving something else. It's the best way I can put it. We're craving for the soul's technologies and graces and gifts. But earth and its cultures and subcultures and societies have taught us to crave um, things that are more sensory. And we pull that into spirituality as well and then call that um, spirituality. <laughs> we pull that into our spiritual practices and call that nirvana. We call that enlightenment. We call that um, spiritual awakening. Um, and we think that that is what we should be craving. And craving that can become very lonely as well. That can only lead us so far. And that's what ancient Lemuria knew instinctively and intrinsically. So to live with no longing, no longing. The only longing we should have is the longing for cosmic source itself to be remembered through our human and galactic nature. That's it. That's the only true longing is the craving for the graces that the soul will bring to us. That's what we should crave, but not so much that it becomes a craving that the mind calls pleasure. And we'll get to that in a moment. Um, because we could spend so much time just saying, why can't you just be peaceful, <laughs> right? Why can't you just be happy? Why can't you just be? And then the mind takes over. So it is a unique balance. Lemurians knew that balance. They knew that elemental connection, earth, air, water, fire, 
um, what helped them understand the nature of the soul naturally as they organically stepped into nature, put their feet on the earth, blessed the water and sang to it. Don't worry, we'll get there in a minute in class. Um, today's blessing for you was a blessing of all of the elements. So you can go back and listen to it and enjoy it. But you can learn to do this on your own to connect to the elements that created you, right? All of the elements of creation that create sort of the, the substance in everything that makes up the body and the mind, and then the cosmic nature of the soul. Earth's elements can help you with that. So that's a part of this class. Um, Lemurians also knew that their soul would help them uncover their innate gifts. That's why we call this class gifts of Lemuria. They knew that their gifts were a part of their true nature, not necessarily something that they do or offer, but that their gifts simply flow from them and become an offering. And then the, these gifts, um, they may become an offering when necessary, but there was no real external pressure from society to survive no pressure for power no pressure for control no pressure for safety and this means that their gifts were not displaced their gifts were not misunderstood you see this commonly in spiritual practice there are so many teachings out there that teach you um sort of top down to open up the senses to open up and derive pleasure only when you can see something that you feel is different than you or other than you, and that becomes a different craving in and of itself that initially feels good, but will leave us unsatiated at a deeper level later. In order to uncover your soul's gifts, it would be wise to become aware that Knowing is not something that can occur in advance. We can't just be told what our gifts are or just have them come first to direct us. It's the soul that uncovers the gifts and then the gifts flow typically without our direction and sometimes without our awareness, at least at first. Um, wisdom is uncovered during that journey of the soul's um remembrance but not in advance that that's something that's going to be a little bit difficult for most people to get their heads around in this class um nature itself doesn't know if you want to think even about all of the other animals that are no different or better than us and all of the insects upon this being that this earth that um trod the soil with us um, they don't know a lot in advance from their minds. They have a deep instinctual nature of what to do. Like the grasshopper isn't walking around um, preparing for things um, because it knows something. It prepares for things because something deep inside says winter is coming. Ants are the same way. When animals mate the way that they mate, they come into season. They're not like humans who just have sex for pleasure all the time. I'm not indicating that there's anything wrong with that. But there is a unique uh, physiological, natural, and spiritual reason why the insects and animals of our lands do things. Why they eat, when they eat, why they have sex, why they reproduce, why they sing or do their calls. And birds don't sing just because it's pretty or because it feels good or makes them feel good they have something deeper that isn't derived from pleasure that says i'm a bird and i sing your soul has something very very similar so if nature itself doesn't know from the mind in advance it just flows with these intrinsic graces that help them into their wisdom, help the, every every being of nature um, works with their soul in a way that's unknown to them and beyond 
human or animal knowing. It's beyond that. Okay. So let's talk about the gifts, the original soul's gifts that everyone was born with. Every one of us here today explored Lemuria uniquely with these unique gifts. And they're also graces, but they're slightly different than the way that we teach them. And each of them are slightly different than the way that I've shared them with you before. So we're going to talk about the original graces of this planet. Um, hold on, let me plug in. There we go. All right. Are you writing down? So we have 11 of them. Zeal. Zeal. How often do you hear these words? A zealous person works with the element of fire and air. They know um, the throat chakra energy of being able to speak clearly, directly, right? Well, the Bible got it from somewhere, but that wasn't the first group of beings who channeled that information. The Essenes knew it prior, and the Lemurians knew it well in advance, along with the ancient Sumerians. Um, and many, many other, many other religions and spiritual um, groups knew this before it was in the Bible. Zeal. To be zealous means to operate with the element of fire, to be clear, directive, and full of life and energy. We can always tell like the truly zealous person because most person, most people will judge them as being overly zealous. And they'll say, wow, they have so much energy. It's like they never stop. Zeal. When we have that unique gift of the soul, it gives us an energy that is endless. Right? The second gift of the soul is levity. It operates with the element of air primarily. And again, um, you may connect with these gifts slightly differently, right? But levity is a lightness. You may find that um, people with levity are just naturally so positive. Don't mistake it for humor, even though people with the grace of levity can actually have a lot of joy. The grace of joy goes along with levity, but levity is a unique express gift because of the grace of joy and because of the grace of bliss, all of that. Those are the two graces that work with this gift. Um, if you meet people with levity, you just can't stop smiling. They're smiling and it's contagious. They're laughing and it's contagious. Um, they know how to bring a sense of lightness and to, to just about any situation, right? And, and we all know people with levity because you walk into the room and they are lighting up that room. And it's not in a way that's like, zeal is a little bit more, a lot like a confidence with it. Levity tends to be um, softer. Yeah. Some people may may confuse, society may confuse the gift of levity for being um, some people could, could say, oh, well, they're just, um, you know, what they say about blondes and they're so silly and they have a sense of like goofiness and silliness about them. And that can be confused for not being intelligent, unfortunately, in American culture, but it's not true. <laughs> the third gift is mediation. And it is operating typically through the element of earth itself. We need people with this gift on our lands because we have so much war. We have so much fighting and, and argument and disagreement. People with the gift of mediation can stand in the middle of all sorts and not choose any side. Those around them will actually typically get um, upset with them for not choosing a side, right? People with the gift of mediation could just stand and listen. 
right? Just stand and listen and not choose any side and not be really, they don't have a lot of um, cravings or attachments or that hole that happens karmically to, to want to get upset about something. And they're not easily pulled into that sort of karmic energy to create more karma in a situation. Um, people with the gift of mediation have a sense of balance where they can listen to all sides of a story. Um, they make exceptional attorneys. So I see a lot of people with that gift going into law or becoming a judge or um, becoming a person who can mediate prior to court experiences. Yeah, because they have this sense of peace. Mediation works with the grace of peace. Um, and it helps us to find a middle ground no matter what we believe and no matter what we think and no matter who we think we are and what we think we've overcome and who where we've come from and what we've experienced we we don't pull suffering into it when we're around um a person with the gift of mediation and we're not um it, it's like when, when you're around a mediator everybody is affected by their peace and their grace of humility so those are the two graces that work with this unique gift right and they're grounded people you they spend a lot of time with trying to be grounded and focusing on that um the third gift is connection it works with the grace of harmony the grace of compassion the grace of love the grace of peace it works with just about every grace it works with the grace of mercy as well when you have connection um you're looking more deeply and getting a deeper wisdom and um connection does work with the grace of wisdom and the grace of understanding in a way that helps you see why and how people feel the way that they feel and you're not threatened by um anyone else's belief system or thought stream or uh, their pain their suffering um reverence this is my favorite gift we're allowed to have creative preferences and this is one that i am um often attempting to cultivate for you is a sense of the sacred so um a person who has the gift of reverence has a sense of making all things sacred um and, and they will do that. They will attempt to apply that reverence to all situations. Even if it annoys people around them, they will keep trying to be reverent, keep trying to be sacred, keep trying to pull that sense of humility and the grace of reverence into making every single thing sacred. Um, and they won't stray from it. It's very difficult to get them to stray from it. And if they do, they recognize it, forgive it, and move on. So the gift of uh, the soul gift of reverence works with all of the graces it works with all of the elements um next we have tolerance it goes along with um the grace of mercy and the grace of patience and the grace of fortitude so you can ask for all of those graces to get more tolerance um tolerance isn't one of my unique personal gifts so i am often having to ask for the grace of mercy, the grace of forgiveness, the grace of patience, um, to kind of become a more tolerant person. The grace of humility is another one to ask for if you want to remember um, your gift of tolerance in your soul. Um, tolerance works with the heart chakra as well as the element of air. Um, tolerance is for the root chakra as well because it's very grounding when you can develop a tolerance um, when um, the rest of the world can't. So push yourself, try to develop tolerance for all types of beings, whether they irritate you in a minor way or whether earth circumstances and political systems, that that deserves tolerance. Not necessarily that you think it's right or that you think it's wrong, but tolerance means you can forgive it. You can see how other people are choosing in their freedom to embrace things and to learn from those things karmically and when you can see that deeper wisdom you become more tolerant it is indeed a unique gift and a gift that 
all of us could stand to ask for, remember, and work very well with. Um, the next one is wisdom, the gift of wisdom, which works primarily with the earth element. Um, wisdom is this deeper, deeper knowingness, this deeper feeling, this innate feeling that even if you don't understand, even if you don't agree, that there's a wisdom, right? It's not always that you know or that you have knowledge about something. Although the grace of wisdom does work with the grace of knowledge and understanding, um, and you can ask for the grace of understanding, when you have wisdom, you say, you know what, I don't actually have to know. And that's not irresponsible of me as a human in, in a modern society. Um, I can trust that my soul knows something that I don't. I can trust that cosmic source knows something that I don't. I can trust that I will actually know very little in this lifetime. And what I know, no matter how much it is, is so small. It's only an iota of a, a speck of sand compared to the shores of cosmic source. And its vast shoreline expanding through all of the cosmos. When we have the humility to admit this, wisdom comes naturally. Um, the gift of compassion, it operates through water and fire. So there is like a fiery compassion, and then there's a gentle purifying compassion that makes everything okay. And you can feel the difference when you're around people, ultimately flowing with the, with their soul gift of compassion so when you feel really lit up about something and something terrible has happened that's that fiery compassion and then when you feel like you just need to step in and calm people down because there's so too much of the fire element that water element purifies and it and then the compassion becomes softer and then people calm down and go okay i'm sorry i yelled at so and so and <laughs> I shouldn't have maybe said some of those things. And um, that's when forgiveness comes in. So this compassion does work with the grace of allowance and trust, acceptance, and the grace of forgiveness. Um, the grace of gratitude works with the earth element. The grace of gratitude is there. And when we, it can really pull us back and ground us in. When you become grateful, you can recognize everything all the reasons why you're actually here on this planet so gratitude is an important gift all right the grace of harmony it's also known as oneness it works with um this particular gift of harmony works with the grace of truth and love its element is water it's always very purifying and centering and then the gift of virtue now it's not what you think it is when you hear the word virtue in some of your alchemy texts for those of you who are studying the mysteries right now it's not always something that you think is good you're virtuous or you're a good person or a pious person although it does work with the grace of piety piety means devotion and an innate sense of wonder and goodness it's the capacity to see goodness no matter what no exceptions that's piety that is that grace a sense of innocence is the best way that i could explain the gift of virtue is to have to have virtue means to be able to see innocence in all things and wonder when you can't you start to wonder and you envelop yourself with a sense of wonder it's very purifying hence working with the element of water all right so next we're going to talk about the actual technologies that go along with these gifts right so remember for the gifts you have zeal zeal levity mediation connection reverence tolerance wisdom compassion gratitude harmony and virtue the technologies that go along with them are you are an oracle that is a technology that is a unique ability perhaps you are a healer it's another one so you can be writing these down if you want to take notes oracle healer channel a channel is just a messenger 
We might be a messenger of healing, but that doesn't make us the healer. We might be a messenger for the angels, but that doesn't make us an angel. Do, do you see what I mean? We're just a clear pipe for something to flow through. It's oracle, healer, channel, artist. So an artist, they're also musicians, anything artistic like that not necessarily confined to being a musician or a painter or a writer, et cetera. Um, you have the seer or the visionary. Most oracles are naturally seers and visionaries. You have the scribe. That just means you're channeling through writing things down. It's all about writing for you. Everything comes through scribing and writing. You have the muse. So the muse is really hard for me to explain. It's always the person who sits in the background engaging in a sense of wonder and mystery for everyone else. Muses are typically quite lonely because they have all these other abilities, but it's typical that you refuse to bring them out <laughs> and you go, well, which one should I? Which one should I? What should I do? Which feels best? So the muse is typically sitting there being the beauty, being the illuminating grace, being that for another person to look at and write about or look at and sing about or look at and be inspired about. Um, so books are written about muses um, and have been for thousands of years. Mona Lisa was a muse. Some of the ancient oracles um, are muses as well and oracles because they finally let themselves see their visionary nature um but muses are typically the person there with the gift of connection to help everyone else but where you could stand to grow most is kind of standing out on your own and saying i'm not just here to inspire other people what am i actually inspired about who is my muse what is my muse how do i find my unique passions right um, the shaman or the dream walker, these are people who can walk between worlds. Shamans are unique. The, the, I like to call them dream walkers instead, um, or world walkers, but it's shaman's just more of a modern day word. And it's for someone who can go through time and walk through time and get very familiar with the world of the dreaming. Um, whether you think you're sleeping or waking in this world, most people are still dreaming. Right. So a shaman is very acclimated to walking through dreams and helping people walk through their own dreams as well. Um, so those are the real viewers of the world, the time travelers, shamans kind of go into the Akash a lot, go into past lives, etc. So that's a unique technology of the soul. The next technology of the soul is called the medicine holder. Notice I didn't say medicine man or medicine woman. A medicine holder is someone who's interested in ancient medicines and not just from plants, all sorts of essences, whether it be a spirit animal essence in that type of animal medicine, spirit, spirit animal medicine or animal totem medicine it could be the essence of a plant. This is where homeopathy began thousands and thousands of years ago, or it could be working with the plants and you know and merging with them physically by eating or drinking etc it could be that as well but i don't want you to think it's only that there are sound medicine holders um medicine holders typically are great at holding space um they are exceptional with the gift of compassion they're typically just born with that naturally compassionate people but what you could stand to work with is to not be so shy um, work on a soul esteem. Some people call that motivation, inspiration, or confidence, but I find that those are just words that are very, um, that the energy is very empty in these words. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> so develop a soul esteem. Trust, trust your soul a little bit more to speak and work more the element of air um, to, to, to speak more. Um, so the peacemaker works obviously with the gift of mediation. Um, peacemakers are needed everywhere. Um, peacemakers can become anything from police officers to 
Uh, like I was saying before, because they have that sense of mediation, they also can be in any career. They can be in any career. They can be healers as well. They have the gift of healing typically. Typically, peacemakers are also healers, not fighters. Um, then there is the technology of the guardian. We've talked a little bit about the technology of the guardian in other classes. They typically work with the grace of gratitude. They're very grateful people. Um, they could stand to work a little bit more with the grace of humility. They also work with the grace of fortitude very strongly. They're strong people to be a guardian. Um, they work with the grace of levity. They can add that element of air, that sense of lightness to things when they want to. And they also work with the element of fire and the gift of zeal um, to add umph to a situation when people aren't feeling inspired, when people are feeling like they've lost their confidence or that they're feeling a little sad being around a guardian and kind of connecting them to themselves a lot more. And then finally, the last one in technologies is the technology of the warrior. In this soul technology, you work with almost every element. Um, you do need a lot more of the mediation. Warriors tend to just jump at things and want to fight and defend to be offensive or defensive. So we need a little bit of levity, be able to laugh at ourselves and not take ourselves as seriously when we follow through this particular technology. But you do have a lot of zeal. You do have... Um, you do work well with the elements of fire and air and able to speak your truth. You have no problems telling someone your opinion, um, unfortunately, even if it hurts someone else. So you have to be a little bit more mindful and working with the grace of reverence and the grace of humility to kind of not take things so seriously and know when to speak and when to listen. So that would be a bit of a fallback of the warrior. Uh, warriors aren't naturally very tolerant, but they do have great wisdom. If you talk to most warriors, there's a sense of wisdom. They're the typical, typically the first person to go find out the truth about something, right? So those are the gifts and those are the technologies or abilities that come along with the soul gifts. Um, now let's talk about what can block these gifts and technologies, okay? And talk about some practices that are very simple and very powerful but we first have to talk about what blocks so what prevents you from remembering the gifts